everyone welcome to another cornerstone connections lesson with you we are at lesson number two and the topic for this week's lesson is the fathers god chose for his son the key text comes to us from luke 3 verse 22 and it says and the holy ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him and a voice came from heaven which said Thou art my beloved son, in thee I am well pleased. In the book Desire of Ages, page 608 says, The Pharisees had gathered close about Jesus as he answered the question of the sky. Now turning, he put a question to them. What think ye of Christ? Whose son is he? This question was designed to test their belief concerning the Messiah to show whether they regarded him simply as a man or as the son of God. A chorus of voices answered the son of David. This was the title which prophecy had given to the Messiah. The story of Jesus' birth told in Matthew and Luke includes the genealogy of Jesus. However, it is most times overlooked by us. The details of Jesus' background are critical in understanding the plan of salvation. By listing the ancestry of Jesus, it shows clearly that he is the true Messiah, the son of David. When Jesus was referred to the son of David in many different verses in the New Testament, it was referring to his messianic title as, as the Old Testament prophesied. We hope that the lessons we will review will deepen our understanding of Jesus and his reasons for coming to earth. For example, the emphasis of God's character of love and no matter how grievous our sins, if we repent, God will include us in his family. And keep that. If we look at David, we realize that he's a sinful man and Jesus is coming from his lineage. So this is saying that we, we, even though we are coming from a sinful lineage, you don't have to live up to mm -hmm. that expectation, yes, or the reputation of that lineage. Mm -hmm. Now let's jump into the lesson. Peter, you know this week while I was studying my lesson, something struck me and I had to do some research to clarify this. The lesson this week explains the genealogy of Jesus. Mm -hmm where it is emphasized that he is a son of David and of Abraham. If we dive deeper into the lesson, we would realize that women were a part of this genealogy. Did you know, during those times women did not establish bloodlines and they were treated as property? Really? Yes, they were. Let us look at the reason why these women were included. Tamar, Mary, Ruth, Rahab, and Uriah's wife Bathsheba. With the first four, Matthew demonstrated that Jesus is the fulfillment of God's promise to Abraham that through the promised one, Jesus, all nations of the earth would be blessed. And by including Mary, Matthew demonstrated that Jesus Christ is the promised son of the Davidic line. The first four women were Gentiles, and the fifth one, Mary, was a Jew. This shows that Jesus was both a Jew and a Gentile, and that he has the family lineage to stand a king over both Jews and Gentiles over all the earth. Wow. Yeah. I did not know that women were seen as property back in those days, as well as Jesus was both a Jew and a Gentile and could rule over both of them. Did you guys know that? <laughs> Keita, why do you think God told David that he would be a father to his son and will punish him when he does wrong? Do you think this is a promise or a threat? I think it is a promise. In Proverbs 3 verse 12, it says that God corrects the ones that he loves. And so in God correcting David, um, it just shows that how much God loves David. Yeah. Yes, and to top off what you said, I believe it's a promise because in Hebrews 12 verse 3 to 11, 
God, God, the same thing that they say that God corrects those who he loves, and he does this so that we can enter into his holiness. Yes. 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 So the next question. How does the knowledge that God loves you too much to allow you to continue to do wrong and harm your relationship with him, others, and yourself give hope as you face life's difficulties? No. We as Christians, we know that God loves us and he wants the very best for us. And so when we are in challenges that we face, challenges are so we always count on him and stuff and we try to take like take advantage of god's grace and mercy and love and we practically commit presumptuous sin and we should always be mindful of the penalties of sin the book desire of ages page 44 says caesar augustus is made the agent for the fulfillment of god's purpose in bringing the mother of Jesus to Bethlehem. She is of the lineage of David, and the son of David must be born in David's city. So Kithia, I guess this concludes our lesson with you. But before we leave, I would like to leave our viewers with a thought. Usually when the Christmas story is shared, Jesus' genealogy is completely ignored. However, the details of Jesus' background are critical to understanding the full story of his life. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to join us next week as we look at lesson number three. Come down to the Savior. Have a happy Sabbath. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and, and subscribe. And please hit the notification bell so that you can be notified.